imagery to tell you what's going on inside me, it, it would just be indescribable. Um, family and friends and loved ones and leadership and awesome men of God and my own, very own bishop and very own superintendent. Let's give them a hand. Hey Amen. You can do better than that. They say you can do better than that. We got some good leaders, y'all. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy to be under uh, such sound and great leadership. You know, um, things may get rough sometimes, but God is always there. You know, and I just thank God that um, He put in me stick to ativity. And I just thank God that um, I, I'm, I, I don't like to give up. Amen. And the people of God, I appreciate you coming down. Welcome to Berea Church of God in Christ, Rogersville, Alabama. Established September 27th, 2021. Amen. So we're working on our first year anniversary coming this September. I'm going to put a plug in, Mother Harris. I want to see y'all back again in September, okay? It is such a blessing to be here. I want to give our praises to our Heavenly Father, yeah. to Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our yeah. Holy Spirit who guides us every day. I'm glad to be at Berea Church of Berea Church of God in Christ. And to all of the uh, men and women of God that are present today, I give uh, honor to you so good to see you all most of you I don't know and to the pastor of Berea I got it right that time Pastor Boswell and beautiful Lady Boswell thank you for inviting me to Bishop Meadows who I am looking so forward to hearing from I know there's a right now word 
And I don't want to overlook the young man who I've known ever since he was a baby, Pastor Chris Smith. But once again, to all the men and women of God, I don't know all of you, and I won't try to call your name. Because I can't because I don't know you, okay? But anyway, <laughs> praise God. To each and every one that has come to our community, Rogersville, Alabama, beautiful. Give it up for Rogersville. Yeah. I must say that uh, the Boswell chose a one, well, God sent them to a wonderful place to, to be, uh, to minister. Yeah, to minister, to reach out. Uh, it's a wonderful place, Rogersville. I live, I've lived here all my life. And uh, to, I don't know where all of you have come from, but I'm sure you come from various cities. Anytime that you're back in this area, we would just be glad to see you and, and have you in this area. Shop at some of the shopping centers. Visit Joe Willow Resort. But once again, I am just so glad to have you here. God bless you and may the Lord keep you. Amen. First, I'd like to say, give it all to God. Amen. And to the pastor of this great church. Yes. And first lady. Yes. And to the distinguished guests yes. and the speaker of the house. Yes. I'd like to say, I thank God for they invited me to come out. And I just praise him and lift him up. Because yes. we know it was God doing it. Yeah. Not our. Uh -huh. It was God that had blessed us and kept us. Yeah. And I also um, thank you. Now, I'm not a, say, a resident of Rogerville, uh, but uh, I passed a church here in Rogerville. Amen. Amen. And I praise God for it. And also, uh, like it was mentioned, um, my uh, son has a restaurant, but a little like. Um, I cook there more than he do. <laughs> and after I retired from work, from work, working for TVA, and um, I thought I would have some time to do some other job, odd job. All the honeydews kick, get caught up. You know, I hadn't got to them yet. <laughs> Seems like I'm working harder now than I did uh, when I was working for TVA. But nevertheless, I thank God for the opportunity of uh, enabling me to be in his service. Amen. Because it's always good to be in the service of yes. the Lord. Yes. And it's always good to be in fellowship with all the Christian friends and visitors. Yes. I just thank God for this. And so, also too, like it, it was sta stated that... Um, when y'all leave here, y'all can go down to a restaurant right down the street there, uh, Fuquay Southern Soul Food. But most of all, I just praise God for how he had blessed me. Now, I'm not just this grew up here and grew up and been around and preaching. I also am a, what's a soldier, a, a Vietnam vet. Nevertheless, um, in this race and on the battlefield for the Lord, I can't stop, I won't stop, and I won't give up because I know the Lord has brought me too far. And he has brought each and every one of us here. Just look back over your life and see what God has done for you. He done miracles. He done great things for us. And we just also do that. And raise our hand to him. As let us all say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say it again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because he has done great things in our life. We thank him and Still yet, I feel that I have more work to do. So I just thank y'all and thank for being, I just grateful for being invited here this evening. Thank you.
Give somebody ought to give him a praise. Somebody ought to give him a praise. Come on. I think we should celebrate the young lady. You know, when you look at young people with energy, it reminds you from which you came. <laughs> but we thank God for all of you this evening to this pastor, Pastor Boswell. Amen. Very courageous young man. And to his lovely wife, uh, Sister Boswell. And certainly, I'm blessed to be in the midst of one of the great leaders of this area, Superintendent Dr. Terry Harris. I am so happy to see him this day. And of course, God bless his lovely wife. And, uh, Pastor Smith, we most certainly have been enjoying you this evening, uh, doing a tremendous job. I'm in a new place, meeting new people, and it just makes you feel good that you have brothers and sisters elsewhere. And I thank God for my wife that's traveling with me. And the district supervisor, the women's department of the Huntsville district, was very strong. And her husband, so happy for all of you. And to the pastor, a man that spoke earlier. I'm happy to be here with uh, Pastor Boswell this evening. And, uh, this is what the Lord put in his heart, his spirit to do. He spoke to me about coming to this area. I remember back in the early 90s, I came through here and I saw this area and the late uh, W.R. Mara, Dad Marim came from the hill from this area as birthplace. And I was so excited. I thought that... Uh, I would come here and start a church. But I found out the work that I had on me was enough to do, uh, and I couldn't give quality service if I started something. And you don't want to start something and not be able to take care of it. But it is my prayer that the Lord will continue to smile upon he and his wife. Amen. Amen. And, uh, uh, sometimes we want to think that uh, it's too many churches. But if you see all of the crimes that's being committed, you find out that we don't have enough churches. And we need churches with meanings and with good purpose. Am I right about it? Uh, I really believe that we have been placed into the ministerial field to help prepare people for the kingdom to come. And I work very diligently towards doing that. But all of us that have been in church work for a long time realize so well that church carried an expense. There's no way in the world you can survive without finance. That's right. That's right. And uh, my thing, I give anybody that starts a church in my jurisdiction, they always save a little bit for the bishop. And I'm telling them, Today we're not going to be raising on two or three offers. We're going to raise an offer for this ministry. And, uh, and then I'll get in my car after stopping to eat and going back to Birmingham. Praise the Lord. We're so grateful to be with uh, Pastor Boswell and Dr. Boswell on this occasion. The wife and I were here when they started. We came by a man who we done work. He has done a tremendous work since then, along with his wife. Amen. And I think most of the work he does himself. Praise God. What an ability that he has. It's good to have each of you here today. Thank God for our chairman, Chairman Strong. 
Thank God for Pastor Fuquay and Georgia and Sister Rose. Appreciate the community people. All the elders, I mean, I call all your name. Thank God for the Jefferson as well. Amen. Terrain and Georgia, man, always do. Thank God for Mother Meadows. Amen. My own wife, my hands. And this man, I go back along with Pastor Chris Smith. I thank God for him. He's done a splendid job. Uh, Bishop Supervisor, I'm going to strongly praise God for you. And the big of him, the Antoine Jones, I'm the Oregon. Thank God for him. Thank you. Amen. All right. Well, I'll start calling. All right. Then he stepped out by faith. And I heard so many confirmations since I've been here. The message day was, I will finish what I started. And I heard so many folk agreeing with that today. Amen. <laughs> hey, no, I said, I can't quit. Well, yeah, bless him. Oh, Lord, help me now. Thank God. Man. I can't. Hallelujah. 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 We bless God for it. It is my pleasure this time to present our leader, uh, the Bishop of Red Meadows, uh, Alabama First Jurisdiction. He is a gospel preacher. He's a dynamic leader, amen, a visionary, amen, a little person. And we praise God for him. And it's just my pleasure to follow him in Alabama First. Amen. He's going somewhere. And he's taking Alabama First from us. Some, some, nobody to say that. Amen? And we're praising God for our dynamic leader. So it's my pleasure this time to present to the Son of the the Bishop, Owen Meadows, who's a uh, jurisdictional bishop in Alabama first, pastor of the Man and Timber Church of the Christ here in Birmingham, and he's somebody leader. And I thank God that he's my leader. We'll have an A selection from uh, Ellen Stanton and then if he's confusion, would you stand and receive God's family out of the bishop or the mother? I send preachers out to preach or to pastor, and I tell them what they have to do. I said, man, if you go down to Seven, Alabama, the pastor, you got to be able to tell the folks something. They want you to tell them something. They want you to look into the future. <laughs> and then the, you got to talk about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I was down there and I didn't mention Dr. King and I didn't tell him nothing. I just opened my Bible and started preaching as usual. Everybody looking at each other. And I went home that night. You all may think this is a tale, but this is the truth. I went to my room that night and I got on my knees, cried before God. I said, Lord, I don't know what to say to these folks. You know, I've been preaching two nights and I haven't got my first amen yet. <laughs> and it came before me just like somebody opened a book. I said, tomorrow night you make sure you make mention of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> And uh, let them know that I'm going to open some doors and make some ways for them. <laughs> and when I said that, they started hollering, Amen! <laughs> One of the oldest sisters that took the purse and threw it at me. I said, I got it going now. I was in another place and I thought I preached like coach at Church of God Christ preached. And uh, I mean, I'm just preaching my lungs out, boy. They looked at me. I went home that night to the hotel room and got on my knees and cried before God. You know, I really know God works with you and give you what to do. Yeah. And uh, Spirit woke, said to me, you ain't preaching to Church of God in Christ, folks. This is a community revival. So you got to break out on him. <laughs> And so I threw the hymn out there and they started, oh! <laughs> Another lady threw her purse at me. I said, I got it going. And ain't nobody told me nothing. Said, what do I have to do? <laughs> but I do have a word from the Lord. We almost understand we are part of one. Help me to say we are part of one. Most of you probably don't believe that, but we are. Amen. There is not but one God. 
And all of us that's in the Lord serve the same God. Amen. I don't care if you call him another name. You can call him Jehovah Jireh. But we're talking about God. Amen. God bless Dr. P and I mentioned her. In Psalms 23, if y'all see my head up here, I got Dr. Pastor Dr. Boswell. I have it there for purpose because I got so many sermons until uh, I look for the one I'm told to be preaching that I done studied before I left home and I can't find it. So I start putting titles to them so I know where I'm at. Getting old, don't play with you, do it. <laughs> David was one of my favorite characters of the Bible. I like reading about David. David kind of remind me of myself living in a troublesome situation. Right brought up on the wrong side of the railroad track off the creek bank and Amen. needed some help. Yes. Parents did the best they could and the best they could do wasn't much but it was all they could do. So I learned the hard way that you can't make it in life without God. And the thing I love about God, God loves us in spite of it. Yes. Yes. Loves us regardless. Love you whether you call on his name or not. Amen. 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 Now y'all don't want to hear this one, but he loves you if you don't even serve him. Amen. Amen. Yes, he, does. Amen. Uh, he did not come uh, with an agenda to destroy you. He came to you to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly and that's the reason why as you go through life you have to listen hear and learn one planet another water but the bible says god gives the increase and uh, that's absolutely the truth when we look at this Psalms, Psalms 23, I want you to know that it is most certainly one of the most uh, read verses or uh, chapter of Psalms in the Bible. Praise God. This Psalms is presented to the public more than probably any other. When you go to the funeral, the preacher at the funeral gonna talk about Psalms. 23. I got a little subject that I want to leave with you today. Uh, keep your eyes on Jesus, your good shepherd. We are living in a very difficult time. The people that have much have emotional problems. People without anything is almost in chaos. We're living in a day and time where all of us must understand that leaning to our own understanding is not going to get us very far. Amen. The psalm itself, as one of the uh, students said once, is green pastures. It was a text, subject matter rather, that we was doing once when I was in school. And it goes on and says, Psalm itself is still water. Psalms itself restores my soul. And when you hear about this Psalm, David experienced his learning lesson in the field caring for his father's flock. He had good experience. He had eye-open experiences because so he was able to observe and see how to navigate people through troublesome time. When the animals was in trouble, uh, David, the shepherd, would have to go to their rescue. And uh, he learned that there's some 
time in our lives that we need someone to rescue us. If any, have you all ever been there where you need somebody to rescue you? Amen. When you get sick on your sick bed, the doctor, now the medicine doesn't help you. You need somebody that can rescue you. I fell in 50 feet of water not knowing how to swim down in the bottom of the lake and uh, didn't realize anything about getting out from down there because I yet don't swim. But I love fishing and I fell off the nose of my boat. And uh, while I was down there, I said, Lord, I need your help. I, I don't know how God answered crazy prayers, but I tell you one thing, he's good at working miracles. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I need your help. I literally saw myself rounding, but the Spirit spoke to me. You know, we say God, folks of God don't talk. I'm sorry he don't talk to you. <laughs> but he's a good partner of mine. He's my best friend. He, he talks to me. And he just told me to take your hand and lift them up over your head straight up and look like I shot up just like they were shooting me out of cannon. And guess where I ended up at? Right up under the bottom of the boat, grabbed a rope and pulled myself back in the boat. So uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Now you don't go no for that because when you get there, that's all you need to go because... And literally what is saying, the Lord is everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Amen. That mother Draper back there, he's everything. How many of y'all know he's everything? Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, he, he's, a, he's a doctor. That's what the old folks say. He's a doctor in the sick room. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And, and guess what? He's been a lawyer in the courtroom for me. Yes, yes. Amen. He, he's been a lawyer when I was dealing with IRS. Amen. <laughs> he, he, he know all business. And you can't fool him on anything. Y'all gonna prove me for just a little bit? I'm gonna be through in just a little bit. Let the church say amen. Uh, uh, David testimony, uh, his personal experience with God. How many got a personal experience with God? Amen. Amen. And, and, and I, I want you to know today, man, that God will come to your rescue. Amen. And, and David understood that he was in a position that he couldn't help himself and he needed God to help him. So Psalm uh, 23 1 said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I like those last three words. He said, I shall not want. Amen. Confidence in God uh, that whatever situation you're in, you need to understand that you don't have to be worried with yourself. You can believe that God is rewarded for those that diligently Seek him. I like what David said in verse 2. Say, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. Somebody help me say, He maketh me lie down in green pastures. And then he said, He leadeth me besides the still waters. Amen. He, 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 can, he can keep you calm in the midst of trouble. Amen. Then, then amen. He said, Yea, though I walk through. The valley, the shadow of death. He said, I fear no evil. Amen. And I, I love this fifth verse because if thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. I don't care who it is that doesn't like you. Amen. God can fix every bad situation. Amen. How many of you got a testimony that you're an overcomer? Amen. Amen. You are an overcomer. All of us have overcome something in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I right about it? Yes, uh, so God is a mighty good God. Yes, Amen. He's good all the time. Yes, Not sometime, but all the time. Yes, uh, 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 I, I, I want you to understand that, that this writing happened, amen, some thousand years before Christ. Amen. 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 And notice that in the first three verses, David uh, refers to God to uh, uh, in the third person category. Amen. He's your everything. The Lord is my shepherd. 
He, he, he makes me lie down, makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores my soul. And then when you get down to verse 5, 4 and 5, he lets you know David's shift referring to him in, in a second verse. I will fear no evil. Amen. You, you are with me. God's with you everywhere you go. Amen. You can't get up too early for him. You can't lay down too late for him. He's with you. Even when you're going through valleys that is trouble to your mind, God is with you. Yes, sir. Amen. God can give you strength. Amen. When all of your physical strength is gone, God can make you strong in the midst of weakness. He's everything that you need. I, I, I like what David said. I will fear no evil. And, 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 and I'm telling you this today because we are living in a very troublesome time. Most of us sitting here today, man, we have not experienced, amen, life, amen, all our life that we've experienced in the last two or three years. And in the midst of all of that, God meets us every morning. Wake us up on time, never late. Never late. Amen. Some folks, amen, they, they come to the end of their journey. But the Lord God, amen, reached out and touched them and told them to live on. I can see, amen, in my own experience why Israel, the Jews, were so troubled, amen, down in the wilderness. Amen. In the wilderness, the experience is one that's so uncertain. You don't know what the next meal coming from. You don't know what's going to happen next. But always be mindful, regardless of where you are, God is in your midst. Yeah. Amen. The, the most important thing in our lives we need to know, amen, is make sure we stay in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. God is safety for you. Yeah. Amen. I, I told him this morning, amen, you, this is not your battle. You don't have to keep on fussing and arguing. Put your situation in the hands of the Lord. Yeah. The Lord will work it out. Somebody, do you know that God will work it out? Yeah. Amen. So, so, so stop worrying about every little thing. God's going to make your work right with you. I'm about to get through here. Let the church say amen. Why, why, why is it that David, amen, switched from talking about God with he to talk to God with you? Why does it happen? In verse 4 he said, why did he just go on to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for he is with me. He is my rod, he's my staff, and, and, and they comfort me. Amen. Then he gives it to be a plural statement because what God the Father, God the Son is with you everywhere you go. I need somebody to say amen. amen. I need someone to say amen. amen. And when Jesus was up on the face of the earth and was trying for him to go, he cried out, amen, said he would not leave you comfortless. But I pray to the Father that he'll send you another comforter. Y'all all right? He didn't die until he made contact with the Father. Because he was departing, going back to sit on the right hand of God. And he sent back the Holy Spirit to dwell, to live, and abide in you. So you have a comforter that will go with you everywhere you go. I need somebody to say amen. amen. Come on and say amen. amen. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want you to know, amen, your valley is not too deep. Yes. But the Lord can reach down and get you. Yes. I heard David said, I was in a harbor pit. Yes. Amen. I was down there all by myself. Yes. But the Lord picked me up out of the murky mine and placed my feet up on a solid rock. Put running back in my feet and put it back in my hand. Somebody need to say yeah. He's all right. You just got to trust him and never doubt. Say yes, Lord. I'm trying to get through here as we continue. I study in Psalms here. Let me tell you one thing. Stop fainting. Trust the Lord. Stop doubting. Trust the Lord. Don't live in fear. I'm committed not to live in fear. Say yes, Lord. For when you live in fear, amen, you're full of anxieties. When you live in fear, amen, your nerves break down. When you live in fear, amen, your heart stops regulating. When you live in fear, your blood pressure shoot up. And since God has declared to you that he will be your everything, let the church say yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Let's say yes. Now I want you to know David had a great experience. And that's one reason why he had great confidence in God. Because he knew when the sheep's were in trouble. 
He never left it for himself. Say yes, Lord. He would always go to the rescue. And I think that's the best lesson he could have learned. And now he have a problem. But who shows up but God? Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. So he's everything you need. The path through the valley is also one of the path of righteousness in which God leads. He guide me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Say yes, Lord. But why would a good shepherd who wouldn't lay down his life for his sheep? Say yes, Lord. And I love the Lord because he will, amen, reach out to get you wherever you're at. There's only one possible answer to get to some better place. Say yes, Lord. And that is you need somebody have a better experience than you have. You need someone have power over, over the enemy that would almost take you out. And the shepherd knows from the past experience that the predator like amen, amen, the bear, the wolves, and the cougars, amen, can take cover uh, in broken cliffs and from the injured parts and prey upon his flock. But the eyes of the Lord is in every place. The Holy Ghost, the evil and the good. Tell somebody he will take care of you. I hope I said something to you today to give you to understand that God is with you. Say yes, Lord. You know, you know, you can overcome the big sea, but you got to have faith. You got to have confidence in God. You got to stop fainting. You got to believe that the Lord will reward those of us that continue to seek for Him. Seek for Him in the midst of your trouble. Let the church say, Amen. Psalms 84 11 said, No good does the Lord withhold from you. Those who walk upright say, Yes, Lord. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Am I right about it? So your valley is not too deep. That the Lord cannot rescue you. I don't care where it's at. The predators may be close to you. But they can do you no harm. If you trust the Lord. All these years we've been in, up on the face of this earth. It's been God that have taken care of us. And uh, guess what? He never grows old. Never grows old. He mean accurate all the time. I trust I've said something today that will enlighten you and that will give you the confidence that the end is not now. Yes. Amen. I know we preach about he's coming and he is coming. Yes. Amen. Prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord because right. coming is not what most people present to you that the world's finna fall off a cliff somewhere. The world's not finna stop operating. Amen. We are ourselves are going on. But the world will continue to be. So we need to seek God while he is near us. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. your hands and say thank you Jesus it's because of him we thank you, thank you Jesus amen so we don't want to belabor the time but we're here to fellowship and I'm just glad that Bishop gave an awesome word you know you can't faithfulness is so important and I just thank God for Bishop being faithful. He said he's going to come down. I didn't have to text him. I didn't have to call him or remind him. Matter of fact, last time I heard from him was about a month ago. When he said he was going to come, that was it. And you know God's the same way. You don't got to keep on. Come on, God. You don't do it. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He said it. That's it. Amen. I, I'm not preaching behind Bishop. But I just got up to say, let's go eat. Amen. That's what Jesus did. He was at the banquet hall, right? Amen. He, he preached and they ate, right? 
So y'all, let's go eat. Amen. God bless you. Everyone gave the one to give, right? Amen. In Georgia Bishop. Amen. Good message. Let's let's stand. We're going home. Every head bowed. Eternal God, our Father, thank you for our gathering this afternoon. Thank you for the message, Lord, that has been presented. And Lord, we thank you for this pastor. Pastor, we ask you to bless Pastor Boswell. Bless his ministry, Lord. Give an increase. We speak increase into his life. And God, we thank you. Let him be a light in his community. Now, God, as we go from this place, enough in your presence. Go with us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. Station time. So here I am, Jesus. All I have is your word. Show yourself to be God. I know you won't let me down. Oh, on the I won't stop believing. I won't stop believing. to show me a sign so today I challenge heaven cause I feel that a spirit is manifestation time so here I am Jesus all I have is your word show yourself to be God I know you